This is the first part of a lecture on the accumulation of damaged proteins um, and proteostasis during aging from October 2nd, 2020. And in this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the idea of molecular fidelity and proteostasis. Um, and we're going to talk about the energy balance and molecular fidelity in cells during different stages of life, so in development, maturity, and then into senescence. And then finally, we're going to talk a little bit about how um, molecular fidelity is maintained through proteostasis and several different aspects of proteostasis that have been implicated in the modulation of aging and longevity. And so we know that all matter is subject to the laws of thermodynamics. This is a concept that we talked about um, earlier in the class in relation to why aging is sort of a random or stochastic process. And so when we think about matter, we have to think of the level of molecules as well. Right? And so molecules in your cells, particularly proteins, are subject to the first and second laws of thermodynamics. And so that first law um, as a reminder, it's just that energy can't be created or destroyed. And so the total energy in a system, um, in the case of this lecture, really inside of the cells or an organism, stays the same. There can't um, be energy that's created um, and none can be destroyed, right? It can only really change forms. <clears throat> and every time an energy changes forms, the energy transfer between the different forms is not 100%. And that is sort of the second law of thermodynamics. And that if you can't replace energy lost with some type of usable energy, the system tends towards disorder or entropy. And so um, increasing entropy is also part of that second law of thermodynamics. And increasing entropy or disorder within a system leads to accumulation of damaged biomolecules, in particular proteins. And that's what causes most of the um, hallmarks of cellular aging, which means in order to maintain order, organisms need to constantly be inputting usable energy into the system to kind of offset that increase in entropy that happens with time. And by inputting usable energy, they can sort of stave off the accumulation of damaged molecules and stave off aging, at least for a while. And ultimately, they can't um, push off accumulation of biomolecules forever. And there's this idea that over time, molecular fidelity or the structure of a molecule that allows it to perform its function decreases, right? And so with age, we lose molecular fidelity, particularly in proteins. And their proper structures break down, which then results in them becoming less and less functional. And the types and extent of damage to different types of biomolecules, including proteins, varies. It varies um, over time, it varies between cells, and that's part of that idea of randomness in the system, right? So we can't necessarily predict what type of damage will occur to a biomolecule or how damaged that biomolecule will become because this is variable between um, organisms and cells. But organisms that are better at maintaining the molecular fidelity of their proteins are better at resisting the decline of aging. And so genes that are able to help maintain the molecular fidelity, maintain that proper structure of a molecule during aging, tend to be selected for. <clears throat> Up until reproduction. And then maintenance of molecular fidelity declines. And so when you think about um, all of this in sort of the system over time. During development, you have total energy, or H, in a system. And that total energy is equal to the amount of usable energy, or free energy, and the amount of entropy. And during development, the entropy or the disorder in the system is relatively low. Everything is ordered, the cells are well in order, there's high molecular fidelity. All of the proteins and molecules have the proper structure that allows them to function. And that um, occurs throughout development, because as we remember from sort of those life stage curves, during development, the physiological function is increasing up to sort of an optimal point, which it reaches during maturity. And so 
In maturity, the total energy in the system remains the same, but the usable energy goes down. And entropy or randomness or disorder in the system starts to take over. And molecular fidelity as well as cellular order can decrease during maturity. And then ultimately in senescence, you can see that entropy now far outweighs the usable energy, <clears throat> which can lead to a low molecular fidelity, break down all the structure of biomolecules like proteins, and ultimately to cellular disorder and aging. And so if you can shift this balance between entropy and free energy and select for genes that can actually help organisms maintain molecular fidelity and resist entropy, you can slow down the process of aging. <coughs> but then after reproduction, this maintenance tends to decline. And that has to do with sort of the trade-off hypothesis, right? And where an organism um, sort of trades off its mortality for its ability to reproduce. There are some um, <coughs> mechanisms in place in the cells that help maintain molecular fidelity of proteins throughout the lifespan, keeping that molecular fidelity as high as possible through development and maturity, um, but ultimately that sort of fail in senescence and lead to decreased molecular fidelity. And one of those mechanisms that keeps molecules um, well structured and ordered so they can perform their function is a mechanism called proteostasis or protein homeostasis. And proteostasis is really a collection of a bunch of different molecular events that help to balance the cellular proteome or all of the proteins within the cell. And you can imagine that in order to kind of keep proteins functional <coughs> and performing um, their jobs correctly, there are several different parts or, or several different processes that are important to doing that, right? So we need to be able to make proteins as well as to fold them and get them to the correct place. So proteostasis includes mechanisms of what's known as protein biogenesis. So translation or protein synthesis, as well as protein folding and protein trafficking so that proteins can get to the correct location to perform their functions. Proteostasis also includes kind of a maintenance function for proteins usually through the form of stress responses, which we'll talk about um, a little bit on the, in the next part of the lecture. And proteostasis also includes machinery and mechanisms that are in place to degrade proteins or get rid of anything that's non-functional or non-structured. <clears throat> and two of those include the ubiquitin proteasome system and autophagy. And so through the process of sort of synthesis and folding and trafficking, and degradation of proteins within the cell, there's a balance between having all the proteins that you need, making sure they're made correctly through folding, get to the correct spot, and that any misfolded or messed up proteins are degraded. <clears throat> and all these different parts of proteostasis help to maintain molecular fidelity and keep it high within the cell and in the next portion of the lecture, we're going to talk about how improving proteostasis can extend longevity and fight aging, and how decreased proteostasis can actually um, exacerbate all of the phenotypes associated with aging by allowing a decrease in molecular fidelity of proteins.